as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomenon. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. Welcome, welcome. Here we go, guys. Just got another indie filmmaker focus. And tonight we got Julian Caesar Valches. How are you, sir? Doing excellent. This uh my day off and decided to come on here, you know, chat up with Cam. We've uh, kept in touch throughout the years and <laughs> look forward to working with you pretty soon. You know it, you know it. And yeah, we, we we're still long overdue on to just work on a project together so yeah <laughs> yeah very long overdue very long uh, <laughs> but uh, i'm going to need your help on my movie which we will talk about that <laughs> uh, absolutely uh, so uh, julian is in the dfw area and has worked on all kinds of shorts and films and music videos so uh, when did you decide you wanted that to be uh, your focus, whether it's a side hustle or your main hustle? Circa 2015, 2016, I would say. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty weird stage in my life. I'm just, you know, trying to figure out what I want to do with myself, with my life. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, just meeting people, started to become more social and come out of my shell some more and, uh, you know, explore different ideas. So I pick up different skills and I always found myself on a movie set or not, you know, like a photo shoot going on or just Mm -hmm. something with cameras. And I always found myself drawn towards it. And uh, I'm from Oak Cliff. So I used to ride my bike around and just meet people in a, in this bar. I met Dustin Cavazos, really good friend of mine and uh, an amazing, amazing music producer. Nice. And, uh, so he was, me and him, we talked, and because I, I, I seen, I heard his music, and I was like, I always wanted to meet him, and then I actually got the chance to meet him. And uh, it turns out he likes bikes as much as I do, so went on a couple of bike rides, and, you know, we, we bonded. And then he was telling me he was going to go on a tour, and he needed somebody for a camera because his camera guy bailed, like, last minute this is like a day before the tour <laughs> so i was like fuck it oh sorry i'll be like okay you know no, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so I, was like, yeah. right. <laughs> I was like let's go so the day before the tour i got on and at this point i've only had like recreational use with cameras you know like on a cell phone or uh the disposable <laughs> cameras so I've had really much interaction with like professional cameras or DSLRs. And I was like, okay. So I went on tour with him first time using with cameras. And uh, I don't know if he was maybe pulling my leg, but he's like, you're natural. And I was like, oh, thanks. I have no idea what I'm doing, but glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, ended up doing the tour with him. I've met a lot of wonderful people and, you know, people understood that I have no idea what I'm doing, but they were willing to to guide me and, and teach me things. So I've met people basically all over Texas at this at this point in time. And um, yeah, I just started getting more calls and like, hey, we got this going on. The second 
project that I did was this artist that I met on the tour. He called me. He's like, hey, I'm going to Houston. I need a camera guy. You want to come with? It's like, sure. <laughs> so we ended up in Houston. And then I met somebody there that they had a movie going on. And it's just a cascade of, you know, the, the chain reaction of just getting out of your comfort zone and just meeting people that are willing to support you as long as you know just communicate with them and it's been great i've had the privilege to be mentored by some professional level dps and i'm like i have no idea what i'm doing with cameras so i learned really quickly and really well because of set mentors that i had i think my first good mentor kind of had a falling out for like personal reasons but overall he was a great dp he was an official spokesman for Panasonic. Any new camera Panasonic would drop, they would automatically send to him so he can review it and talk about it and help market it. So he obviously knows what he's doing. So he taught me a lot. It's such a small amount of time. That's stellar. Yeah. And then from there, you know, just meeting more people. Is Panasonic still your personal favorite? No. no. <laughs> okay. No, no, it's just cool to know. Um, uh, I've gotten so used to shooting with red because we have, we have a couple of reds that we work with. So I've gotten really familiar with red in and out. I work with Ari, but overall I prefer a red. And if I'm shooting at that level, if I'm shooting something smaller, I would go with Sony hands down in my opinion. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, uh, what were your, uh, did, did you still take some college on it or? Nope. No. no. Okay, deal. cool. I have business experience. So that uh, gave me the opportunity to talk business with like professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, I convinced them to give me an opportunity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so all, all of my training that I got, I got it paid on set while paid. Totally. So it's not impossible to do it that way. <laughs> okay, one second. I ordered some food. Oh, it's been a mess. Totally, totally. So um, uh, what, what projects are you the most proud of during that time? Uh, my most recent one that we just finished off. Sorry, I have my hustle. It's a mess. Let me just tell her to leave at the door. So the first, the, my project that I'm most proud of is a short film that we recently had a private screening for the Texas theater right before Christmas is uh, just like the butterfly it is directed by Adam Paul Stone, a genius. Mm -hmm. And he's also my writer for my project. Um, it's a short film, but 22 minutes or so it's a story about a guy who is losing his memory okay. so as he's losing his memory he's dealing with the woman he loves and trying to like maintain their their relationship and trying to remember their relationship all of this why his memory is deteriorating and uh Sweet. Uh, real yeah. time kind of just trying attempting to get it together and yet continually a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great turnout. Uh, I think my somebody, I don't know, I lost you, but I, I, I try to invite you, but we're definitely, I'll invite you to the next screening camp. You definitely got to come out. <laughs> oh, good. It's, it was a chaotic last two years. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, we had a private screening, we had a great turnout. Everybody loved the project. And uh, it was just about a week, a week's worth of shooting. Shout it out in West Texas. Wow. Nice. It's a really wow. beautiful story. We're taking it to the film festivals. It's definitely going to win some film festivals. And after that, it'll be published. But for right now, it's on private. So I can't share it with anybody. <laughs> I hear you. You got to honor that. Um, so... Well, what would you say are still the struggles of 
getting something done and getting it published to a festival since just about anyone can do it now. You can shoot it on any medium. You can set your own deadlines and every yeah. festival still has their restrictions that you got to abide by. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what are still kind of the biggest predicaments that you have a bit of advice for others still trying to engage in that? I would say like if you are trying to get your project recognition, don't rush it. Mm-hmm. It is one of the biggest issues that I see with like a lot of productions is that they rush it. Sit and, on it, think yeah. it over, reevaluate it, yeah. shoot some additional scenes if something's still not clicking. Yeah, or like they just like, well, that's actually a lot better. Like sit on it, collect it, and then, you know, formulate it properly and make sure that you have every piece before you go in because like it's a lot, from my, from my experience, a lot of projects that don't have a budget or don't have any financial backing by it. It's like, it's just fueled by fashion, by passion, you know? Yeah. Like those projects have the possibility to be great, but a lot of people miss it, miss it, miss it, but because they just try to rush it. Like, Oh, I want to do this project and I want to do it like right now. So they get like for just like the butterfly, it was a beautiful project, but it was a bit rushed because we didn't have a lot of the locations like properly like set. But you know, I get it. This is my budget film, but totally, totally. <laughs> Give me one uh, second. Uh, Hello. Still here. Yep. Still here. Sorry. All right. Um, well, speaking of phone calls, uh, do you get those every once in a while where uh, you've had to politely decline a few projects because you, you've noticed someone, is, you know, not, no offense to them, but they just don't seem to get the hint that their project just isn't ready to get made. Like they, they've asked you on a project. They haven't told you about anything about it or, uh, you know, uh, they they need to revise a few things, but they're not doing that even, you know. <laughs> I mean, all of them. <laughs> they all have <laughs> <Yeah>. issues. <laughs> uh, from my experience, 75% of actually shooting a project is things and everything that can go wrong will go wrong. So there's no point in stressing on it, you know. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. So this is like, if we don't have patience, you're you're gonna be so angry in this industry. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Uh, like you gotta have patience. You gotta have the patience. One big indicator that somebody is not going right is often when, uh, just you know, two to three hours have gone by and nothing has gotten accomplished because someone's letting s- some circumstance like pull them up. Have you had to? every once in a while pull someone over to the side and say, Hey, can't wait on this person. We got to get something shot and remind people that they do have imagination. (laughs) Yeah. So yesterday that was that project. Like, don't get me wrong. uh, The director, he's a great visionary, but he doesn't have that much experience on actually managing a set at that scale. Mm -hmm. I think his last set was like five people. (laughs) And uh, this set was like over a hundred people and they had like no PAs. It was just me as a DP, him as the director and the uh, secondary uh, camera and uh, three production assistants. That's it. With a hundred people (laughs) as cast members and extras. So imagine that camp. (laughs) that's <laughs> uh, so complex and it really is amazing explaining to people just how things are done on any scale is like you don't have to shoot anything in sequence and there's always going to be someone who's you know got into a car accident or just yeah didn't so the show issue, up so the issue yesterday was that i said it was, it's his first time direct directing a project in that scale and he focused so much on the cast and all the extra that he was going to need that 
he didn't think so much about the crew, you know, like what he did. Oh, in terms wow. of so I, that's a very common mistake that I see all the time under un, understaffed, like in, in the crew department, just completely understaffed, you know? And uh, so that was the issue there. So I had to be directors trying to be the AD, the AC, the gripping gaff, trying to be the extra coordinator, trying to be the script uh, manager. <laughs> so he's also he's also doing props. So he's in every single department. So I had to pull him over several times. So I was like, hey, stop, 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 stop right now. We have yeah, we have we have three PAs, so let's utilize them as much as we possibly can. Luckily, two of the PAs had actual onset experience, so that made it a lot easier because I was able to just dictate things quickly. Like, all right, I need you to spread the message to all the extras. I need this at this time. All right, boom, they run. And I was like, we need to swap lenses. We need that camera there. We need all this entire area cleared. So I was able to just like move through the shots really quickly. And, you know, the problem with such a large cast is that everybody's an artist. Everybody has an opinion, you know, which is understandable. We want to respect your, your, you know, everybody's opinions. But everybody starts yammering their opinions at the same time. My throat's messed up. So I had to be like silence on set, like really scream it out and just get over a hundred people to shut the hell up at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's almost like sometimes being the substitute teacher is like, if they don't respect you now, you know, they're not going to respect you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you one second? Let me just go grab my food. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. All good. All right. All good. So, yeah, I had to pull the director over at least a good couple of times to remind him that I need him focused because we we only had a couple hours of sunlight. And this is an abandoned hospital with no electricity. And, <laughs> like, we have two, LED, two little micro LED lights. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, I guess, like, you know, since I'm used to working on, like, different scales, like, no budget to, like, I think the biggest project that I've done right now is, like, $2.7 that I've worked on. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I've been able to experience everything. Different and degrees been, of professionalism. And- yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a be- beautiful journey. So you didn't have to waste most of your salary going to college on – film but you had some business background um do you think more and more independent people are just taking forever to incorporate their personal knowledge and come up with some kind of business plan or do you think it's just getting slightly better some people are maturing and actually taking this way more seriously as opposed to let's stick around with a camera for you know six hours and not get anything done uh Everybody has to start somewhere and, you know. Yeah, but you got to evolve if you want to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely evolution is a process that only comes once you're able to step out of your comfort zone. Like, I, I did want to go that route, like start off with the camera and dick around and, you know, figure something out. But I was like, if I want to do this, I want to do this right. So my advice would be, if you actually want to do this, then going that route of just getting a camera and thinking, oh, I get some equipment and I'm going to learn it that way. It's a good route to take, but you're going to struggle tremendously versus, totally. versus like, all right, I know that I want to learn this way. So what can I do? Start off as a PA. The best way to get on, on set experience is to be an actual on set. And everybody always needs PAs. They're, they're the backbone. So as a PA, you get to be there firsthand and learn from some actual masters of the craft. That's the way that you want to learn. You don't want to perform an open heart surgery because you think you can do it. 
you're going to, you're going to perform it because you've studied under somebody that knows how to do an open heart surgery. Extremely well said. Uh, don't ride a bike if you just are not ready yet, you know, get some mentoring, you know? <laughs> yeah, get some mentoring. And the film industry is all love. You, you just get yourself out there, talk to people, talk to people who are actually like have a camera and just learn whatever you can from somebody that already has the information you need. So you can avoid all. if if I had done that from the beginning, I would have been in an entirely different, you know, point in my career. Like I would have been higher now. <laughs> but you know, all those mistakes help me so that I can now like to talk to people. And I have people come to me all the time. Like yesterday, I had people come up to me while I'm shooting. I was like, You wanna learn? Yeah, 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 I wanna learn. Then stop asking questions and just watch. That's it. So yeah, I do. Observe. Yeah. Watch <laughs> what somebody that actually knows what they're doing is doing. Just watch. That's it. And Absolutely. nobody's gonna tell you, stop, watch what I'm doing. No, nobody's ever gonna tell you. This thing about film, you just gotta stop and watch and you'll learn. And they'll have no issue with you being there and learning, especially if you're helping them out. Especially if they're like, if I'm a DP. I'm shooting the camera. I'm holding the camera. Cut. Okay. I need to focus on the next shot. I can put the camera down or I can have somebody next to me that automatically knows to grab the camera so that I can spend those few seconds working on the next shot so that we can move like this. A hundred percent. Yeah. Just tell them, hey, you know, this is it. You know, what we get done is what, yeah. is what we're going to have to play around with later. You know, you don't want if you want to avoid any other complications, spending additional time, maybe possibly even money, you know, we got to make the best use. Uh, you sometimes even have to remind others that, Hey, you know, people aren't necessarily going to be on your wavelength. You've got to keep using your words. You gotta, you're going to find stuff that's not, you know, wasn't, you know, you know, the script is a template and you'll find stuff that even works better than what you could have, anyone could have possibly yeah. imagined. Yeah. It's, it's a collaboration. I said, everybody has ideas on set, even, you know, like some of the greatest movies, some of those shots weren't even planned. They're just like improv because of the actor was comfortable with the director because it's all love. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And having to remind them, hey, you know, no one planned that. And it yeah. just happened, and they still right. don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what was like the issue yesterday that the director had like a vision of what he wanted. I was like, okay, do you know what is required to get what you want? Well, I was like, no, this, what you're requiring to get what you want done is not here. <laughs> right. He wanted this scenes beautifully well lit. Like, how are you going to light? Beautifully, like you don't have any lights. <laughs> oh, like there's, I mean, Even if you have lights, you don't have any power. This is an abandoned building. So, I was like, so let's work on what we have right now. We have a wide lens and a, and a, and a close up. We can run both of them simultaneously. Natural lighting, have it use, use our environment to the, to the best of our abilities and, I cannot complain. Every single last one of those shots was beautiful. Where everybody felt comfortable acting because we ran it the first time. No rehearsal, just like, all right, run it. The first ride, everybody's like, has no idea what they're doing, but they get the sense of it. And then you come back, you see what we're doing here because they see the camera. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, run it again. Run it three times, boom. Everything was well executed. It was perfectly lit with no lights. The shots, everything was angled, was beautiful. Every shot was nice. I cannot complain about every single, any of those shots. That's good. Uh, w w and then, you know, you get to the point where you basically have to remind everyone, hey, again, I'm not hijacking your movie set, but I am, I am just putting a few things out there because you got to comprehend this. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... It, there are several ways, you know, again, people are still kind of, there's some old school guys who just refuse to, you know, even consider a, 
a high resolution phone. And I mean, you can use again, a wheelchair for a certain, certain tracking shots. And yeah. like you say, you're going to need a crane and some extra money for that alone. To pull off a cool angle. Yeah. And, and how much of it do you even have to tell others that, Hey, that this is cool and all, but uh, just, just comprehend this for a minute. You know, that this, uh, what, what, what does the shot serve? You could be spending more time on this and that it might leave a better impression. We're, we're only Superman, you know, in our eyes yeah. <laughs> in the editing room. <laughs> it's all part of the struggle, bro. <laughs> like, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. No. So you just always have to compromise. Like, Absolutely. Compromising is not bad, though. You know, some that's come out beautifully because they have been compromised. Totally. Do you have some fun music video experiences you'd like to share for those trying to get into that? Uh, man, for music videos... Because like you can be looser videos, with the narrative, but yeah. I can't do music videos. Okay, all good. <laughs> I can't. I tried it. I I got a few music videos out there, and, and I'm satisfied with every list, last one of those projects that I've, that I've worked on. But I cannot do music videos. <laughs> okay, all good. Uh, my goal is to be a DP. And in a sense, a DP is basically a dictator. Totally. And, uh, on a movie set, there is no such thing as democracy. It's a yep. dictatorship. <laughs> it's a director, the DP. That's it. Like it's a dictatorship. There is no democracy. But in a music video, everybody's an artist and everybody's trying to be democratic. You know, like everybody has their two cents. Now you've got three hours have gone by where everybody's throwing ideas out and nobody can agree on something, you know? Oh yeah. That's atrocious. <laughs> yeah. So when I get to that. It's just like, okay guys. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, they're artists with so their music artists. So they have no idea what it actually takes to create layers, to create definitions, to create the nice, beautiful shot. They have no idea what it takes. I lucked out on one I was working on about five years back where I, you know, we, we found out ahead of time. Okay. Uh, here's how the artists, you know, bought her to storyboard it. Here's how I'm going to recreate it. And fortunately the cinematographer is also one of the editors and he can sync up at any speed, the various lip syncs. So it's all going to work, but it just became a matter of make sure the extras show up on time and, we could only do one sequence once where the lead singer falls into the pool head first. And, you know, we could only repeat it at one point cause you know, it was darkly lit. So we didn't have to worry about continuity in that aspect. But uh, I was pretty much, yeah, my, my job was to keep it cool and then just let everyone know they're doing a good job. And you know, <laughs> the egos all go to the side and you don't have to worry about anything else except like signing paperwork. And I, I didn't have many other PAs and anyone else on set was just helping out briefly with just holding up the camera. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'd like, when I, when I was like working with music videos, I was like, nah, I can't, I can't work like this. Like I like the, the structure more. So that's why I just like, I'll just go be a PA. <laughs> like I'll just I'll go be a PA on set and you know just there's nothing wrong with music videos. There's nothing wrong with them, you know. If I just like if I'm gonna put my time towards something that I love, I'd rather actually like go all in and work as a grunt PA and work my way up to where I can get hired as, as a DP. And you know, there's people who well, I know they've been doing this for years and they're still mu doing music videos because everybody knows them as a music video director. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're doing great. They, they have a great style. They're shooting great. But at the end of the day, this industry, it is a bit judgmental, you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. So it's like, if you just do a lot of music videos and eventually you'll just end up becoming a music video director and you'll be like 
in that niche. So then it's like, unless at that point, you're going to have to basically put money out of your pocket to make any project that you want to make happen because it's going to be difficult to find actual producers. You know, you get what I'm saying? Uh, so in a sense, basically, it's fun, but it's also one of those people take it a little less seriously since anyone can do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why my my focus was learning the back end of the industry. So if you want to like get in movies, then I would suggest starting in the back end, uh, learning what it actually takes to run a set, learning what equipment is what, learning what each department does and what each person in each department does. And uh, that's the only way to get experience and get paid. How do you even remind others is like, okay, you've tried out this and that. You should get an idea now of what you are or are not good at. And yeah. how, do, how do you tell others is like, well, I know you want to do this. But so far, you just don't have the trust of others, and you're just not very well run in that department. Find out your strengths and your weaknesses first. You know, like what are you good at? If you get good at something, then just get good at that, and then, or you get good at that, people are gonna start calling you just for that. And while you're there, you learn from the other person that's good at this. You know. So master your strengths really well so that people will know you for your strengths. Like, oh, this guy is a great, he, he's a great, uh, he's a great grip and gaff. Like we need him. We need him because I know that he will pull off every shot that, that I need and will set up everything the way that I need it. You know? Absolutely. That's the way that I started. I start. I wanted, when I started, I was aiming for a camera, but I'm still learning camera. And then they're like, well, you don't know much about camera, so why should we put you on camera when we can get somebody else that's good on camera? So I've switched over to Grip and Gaff. I learned Grip and Gaff, and I worked to master that because it was really well for me because I, I have a construction background. I grew up, you know, working, uh, painting houses, installing flooring, you know, so all of that just, I'm good at that. So I got on, on like working on sets, building sets, managing sets, uh, doing the grip and gaff. And those became my strengths that every project that I did, I would get three projects out of it because I was so good at that. And then from there, I started working with some amazing DPs and just watching them and learning what they were doing. And then, and then applying that to projects that I come back and do like, and then like, oh, now, now he's like, people are like, people now know me as a DOP for the fact that now I can work with cameras. But when I'm on set, not only can I work on cameras, but I can also bring out my strengths and do the, do the best on the back end, like do the gripping, do the lighting and the shadows, do all of that to get the shoot moving like this. If that makes sense. Uh, for, for sure. Uh, how do you uh, also, for, for those who have worked on a bunch of things and numerous other projects and yet are still struggling to put together a demo reel, how do you just, you know, a attempt it when even, uh, again, you're still just waiting on some footage and, uh, you know, how, it's just like with the job, getting people to trust you to do it, even though you got very little to show. It's more about who you know. If you work on a set with people, people know that you work good. A demo reel will only take you so far. It's like you can, you don't, you don't need to have a high level camera to shoot a demo reel. You can shoot a, a great demo reel with with an iPhone now. You know. Right. So you can have the best equipment out there, but if you don't know anybody, where what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> so it's more about who you know, you know. 
like I said, I'm still, I'm technically considered a DP, but every day I'm learning something new about camera. So I still consider myself a novice when it comes to like camera work. I don't consider myself at that level of like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I've done projects and, you know, fortunately every, every last one of them has come out good. <laughs> but, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm still a novice. I still consider myself a novice. And I don't really consider people, you know, like professionals because really everybody's just still learning one way or another. A hundred percent. Any future collaborations or visions you want to bring to life? Any gimmicks or premises you want to attempt to demonstrate on screen in some capacity? Uh, going on about eight years now in the film industry, and uh, I've worked on some amazing projects. And this year, I'm just focusing on my project, my debut project as a director. So it's a director and actor, to be correct, because I'm doing both. <laughs> I'm going to be directing and I'm going to be acting in my uh, first project. It's a two hour feature film. Sweet. How is everyone in the, in, how's everyone in the independent side of things handling COVID? It's been a struggle. Some people have thrived. Not everyone um, wants to get tested or show proof. And so that then you're just caught up in arms of, okay, well, we're not coming to a movie set to die. So how do you yeah. Go around that without um i prefer shooting outdoors like if much of it as we can outdoors that's the best way okay. because that way you can provide people the space that they need you know because everybody has their own opinions so trying to figure out what satisfies everybody is impossible right so, just work with what you actually need. Well, you need space. So why would you want to cram a hundred people into a room? Uh, uh, totally. It's already bad enough that you got to feed yeah. some people. And so it's like, okay, yes. here's your happy meals. You know, you eat there, you eat at this table. That's two yeah. yards away here. <laughs> yeah. So just, you know, just, just give space and, and options. Like that's, that's all you need really to the, to satisfy everybody, just space and options. You know, what works with everybody, set up each one. Everybody works on the here. Everybody works good here. And just focus on that, you know. But uh, mostly, all, mostly this year, that's what we've done. It's like every project that we've had to shoot, we just move it outdoors. Like as much of it as we can outdoors. And then whatever we can indoor, whatever we need indoors, then just minimize that as much as possible 100 percent. well it's been a joy talking to you and just again getting yeah. another scoop on how one keeps their inspiration and talents you know visible thank you pleasure uh, yeah. any, anything else you'd like to promote make sure that you stay tuned for more of cam's shows <laughs> oh too kind too guy, and you don't have to stroke my ego. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you having having me, Cam. You know, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's just I want to get some inspiration instead of oh, you know, let's just talk into a mic for two hours. And yeah, no, this was a good show. This was a good. I definitely look forward to seeing some more. Uh, send me the links to all the ones that you have right now. I've been busy, but today's my day off, so I can definitely have time to view them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. We'll return after these messages. JURS Podcasts is proud to promote AutoCorrect, an independent film company with experienced industry professionals who can serve all your film industry needs. They include self-tapes, voice actor recordings, demo reel editing, script revisions, headshots, and much more. They're actor correct at your request. Book them on Instagram. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. 
We have exploitation. We have Italian horror. We have zombies. We have slashers. We have crime films. We have spaghetti westerns. We even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts... Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host cure what ails you. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult physician before listening. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept little popping history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. Greetings, friends. My name is Dean Legero, and I'm the host of the 3324 Podcast. I invite you to join me and my lifelong friend, Eric Kuber, to come with us as we discuss the music and movies that shaped our life. Each week, we'll pick an album or film that we really connect to, and not only give you some great info and trivia, but also discuss, debate, and celebrate what it means to us and the journey it took us on. We also look forward to hearing from you and giving us some of your picks for us to check out and discuss. I think it'll be a really fun experience, so come along with us for the ride. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider, and at 3324.buzzsprout.com. Thanks for your time, and welcome to the 3324 family. It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Everything I learned from movies helps to make life a little bit groovy. With a one last splat holes a gratuitous movies. It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy. At eilfm.podbean.com. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show. 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 It's a j